Hey, this is Antandra, and today I'm going to be doing some sound design in Ableton Live with the Push 2. And so the end result is going to sound like this. I'm going to be starting from this init patch, a basic saw wave, so it sounds like this. And right off the bat, you'll see that all of my macros here are mapped. So I can move the cutoff and the resonance and different things in Serum, the macros here. And the way I accomplish that if I minimize Serum here, you can go in here and you can see that it's all configured. Um, so the way I did that is just the normal way you'd MIDI map stuff is go and hit configure and then you go and click on each parameter you want. And then what I did was just right click and say save as default configuration. So now every time I load Serum up, it has my configuration saved and I don't have to redo that. So I highly recommend doing that with all your plugins. And so yeah, let's just get right into it. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the filter. And now I can adjust that. It sounds like this. You can add some resonance. Some drive. And variation if I want. So in this case it's the fat knob. You can also tap on the track and I can bank through more parameters. It's the unison, and I can go to bank three. You can customize the layout just by the order that you click on each parameter when you're configuring it. So I highly recommend planning out so that it works out into groups of four as best you can that make logical sense for you for each device. So without random phase, it sounds more snappy like this. And with the random phase, it sounds more soft and wide. So it just depends what you're after. You can try different warp modes. So that's fun. Say I want to map that to the macro one, then I can just drag this over here. Now that's mapped. I could also map the cutoff. So now both are mapped to macro one. So now when I turn that in bank one,
pretty fun. And then I could say map the mod wheel. So mod wheels right here, you just drag that to say course pitch. I could option shift click and now it's unidirectional. Now if I hit shift and I tap on this, or select rather, now I can switch to the mod wheel mode and so if I hit shift and click I can go to different octaves and then I can So that's shifting over two octaves. I could change that if I wanted to. I could go to the matrix, double click here, and then if I just type 12 ST, it's gonna be one octave. Or I could type 36 ST, Now it's three octaves. So let's go into bank four. We have octave controls, semitones, chorus pitch. Let's keep going. You can turn on uh, warp mode for B if I wanted. I think I'm going to skip. Let's go ahead and go into the effects. So let's keep going. maybe an LFO. So let's go back over here and drag LFO1 onto the filter. And so that sounds like this. And then I can go back to bank one and let's go ahead and map macro two to the rate of the LFO. <laughs> then I could also turn on the triplet dotted and turn off anchor and let's see what that does. So let's go ahead and record that. Now if I click here, you can see all of that information recorded as MIDI data. And so I could go in here and edit it if I wanted. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and freeze the track. And then I can option drag it over to an audio track. 
And now that that keeps this MIDI data, if I want it for later, I can just mute this. And then I have this that I can mess with more if I want. And so for now, I'm just going to click on this to go to the sample in the browser. And then I'm going to control click and rename it. Squelchy Serum uh, LFO. And then there we go. Sounds like this. So then I can just put that in my library and, and reference it whenever I want. And then, you know, I have a whole collection of different samples I've made, and I can just flip through these at any time and find the ones that are right for the song I'm working on. So I hope you found that useful and check out my SoundCloud. Like and subscribe if you like this video as well. Peace.